That's a celebratory song. I suppose 20 years of democracy is a big celebration in itself. Welcome back. This is Morning Live. Now, let's, uh, let's interview somebody who, who certainly has played a massive role uh, when it comes to 20 years of democracy here in South Africa. Justice Edwin Cameron has been a judge in the democratic South Africa for nearly 20 years. During the apartheid years, he worked as a human rights lawyer and was appointed a justice of South Africa's highest court, the Constitutional Court, since January 2009. In in his latest book, Justice, A Personal Account, Justice Cameron examines and defends the role of law in South Africa's continuing transition. Drawing on his own life experience, including childhood, hardships, uh, struggles with sexuality and stigma, Justice Edwin Cameron joins us in the studio to tell us more about his work and his book as well. So wonderful to see you and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, Leanne. Lovely to be with you and your viewers. You were telling me that the last time we chatted was eight years ago. That's right. In the studio down there, as, as we like to call it, yes. on the stoop. When Buyo was still here. Yeah. Very sadly gone now. Yeah, yes. that's unbelievable. Eight years ago. I don't that's know. Right. Time just flies too much. Yeah. And that's when you talk about 20 years of democracy. That's right. uh, time does fly because... That's right. Or does it? I mean, 20 years, does it, is, it a, is that a long time or we still well, a baby it's, here? It's, it's, we're a baby for our democracy, but we've, we've shown that we're far beyond crawling. We've taken our first steps and we're already on our way to adulthood. So I think we've achieved more than we think we have, Leanne. Uh, but we've still got a long way to go. Yeah. Let, let's talk about you now, because um, obviously we know what you've done for the country, but we're going we're gonna, to uh, remind the viewers a lot of that. But let's go back to the apartheid years, mm. when, you were an apa when you were a human rights mm. lawyer. Mm. What, what made you passionate about human rights? Where did this all begin? Well, Leanne, it, it made me passionate to think that this legal system that was designed to enforce apartheid and to subordinate people and take away their rights mm. and use race against the majority of our people, that legal system also left little cracks and crannies to fight it. Yeah. And so we had human rights lawyers under apartheid, we had trade unions under apartheid in the last 10, 15 years of apartheid. So we, we had a system that you could use against itself. And that was what is exciting about being a human rights lawyer under apartheid. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were a, a white child mm. growing mm. up under apartheid and then started fighting against apartheid. I, you mm. must have encountered many, many challenges as well. Yes, that's right. And of course, being white was very relevant because I came from a poor home. But I had a big break. I got into a very good high school, Pretoria Boys High. Yeah. And the result was that I, the, my future was opened up to me. So it made me see that with, through public educational opportunities, we can change people's lives. But I got that change because of my race, and that made me see that we cannot use race to include some people and exclude others. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the law of a country, and particularly the law of our country, um, was exceptionally oppressive, yeah. and that's the reality. And yeah. I mean, the world looked on this and yeah. thought, no, this is not right, it's absolutely wrong, and yet, um, with the help of you and many other people, this had to be completely turned around from this oppressive law to this all-encompassing law. That again must have been another massive challenge. Well, you put your finger on it, Leanne, that we've decided in South Africa and our negotiators, our founding fathers and mothers decided the law will no longer be this instrument of oppression and, and indignity. The law will become a framework for creating rights and for giving people dignity. And that's the exciting thing about our constitution, which, as you say, is now very nearly 20 years old. Yeah. I, I love the opening. In, in, in your book, you say um, the book is about our country's most inspiring and hopeful feature, its big spirited visionary constitution. Mm. How far has our constitution come in 20 years? Well, not far enough, mm. but it has come a long way. We've got a functioning court system. We've got a separation of powers between the executive parliament and the judiciary which is working but the most important thing is that our constitution embodies values a system of aspirations of of of, of principles that most south africans i think buy into and that's that though it's those values and those aspirations that we as lawyers we as south africans we as ordinary citizens in south africa still have to fulfill we still have to make the constitution real. Yeah. I think what's so nice about this book is that you get personal on us and, and, and it's nice to see uh, the person and the individual, what you are going through mm. through all of this. Um, you mentioned you, were, you came from a poor background, a mm. poor family, um, and your, your first exposure to the law was, was at the funeral of your sister. Mm. What, what mm. happened there? 
Well, I was a little seven-year-old boy. I wasn't quite eight. My sister had been killed the week before, and my father arrived at the funeral in the back row between two prison guards. I didn't realize it at the time, but he'd been sentenced for car theft. So it was a very traumatic encounter with the law, and it started me thinking. And of course, the end of that thinking was that the law is not only an instrument of locking up exclusion, branding, injustice, wrong, but it can also be, and that's what we want it to be in South Africa, an instrument of fulfillment, an instrument of flowering, an instrument of liberation, and an instrument of dignity. Mm. Dignity is something I think that's big and high up on your agenda because you want to live a dignified life and you, um, and I think inspire many, many people because you're the only public office bearer in the country that actually made your HIV status public. Why did you do this? Why, why go out there? I mean, you. You look like a normal, healthy guy that I doesn't am. look sick, yeah. which you are. Indeed. But, but you yeah. came out, you gave us your status. Right. And, I mean, why go this route? Well, it's important to know, Leanne, that I've been on antiretroviral treatment since 1997. So that's almost 17 years. And I'm fit and healthy. I'm about to do the Cape Argus cycle that's race, amazing. as we've been talking. The s for the seventh time. For the, for the eighth, eighth time. time. You've done that's it seven right. times. This that's is the right. eighth time exactly. now. Exactly. amazing. So, Leanne, but the point is, why did I speak out? And there were two reasons. The one is stigma. There's still too much stigma surrounding HIV and AIDS. And the other reason is this medical treatment, the fact that this is a fully manageable condition. I live a full, vigorous, energetic life because I take my ARVs every day. And we've got two and a half million people in our country taking ARVs, and we've got to expand that program, but we've also got to expand people's knowledge of pre prevention and self-protection. Yeah. I mean, you write extensively as well about um, uh, former President uh, Thabo Mbeki's mm. HIV AIDS policies mm. in the book mm. as well, and, 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 and the impact that it did have uh, when you were the constitutional judge president. Just give us a little brief, a brief well, the idea The most that. important thing about President Mbeki's AIDS policies is that we had activists who exercised their right of freedom of association, freedom to expression, freedom of, of association, and we had a court system. And the activists took President Mbeki to court, and the Constitutional Court gave its bravest and most important decision, which was to tell President Mbeki to start making antiretroviral treatment available. Mm. So the lesson from our whole AIDS story is not the wrong-headed lesson of misguided government policy. The lesson is one of successful constitutional uh, implementation. Ah. I hate time. It's my enemy in life. It really is. Because I'm loving this conversation, but I've got to end it. So, but the good news is, the book is out. It's in bookstores around the country it already? Is. All right. If you want to read more, Justice, A Personal Account, uh, Edwin Cameron, our guest here on Morning Live, talking about this book. It's such an honor and such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Leah. Good luck for the Argus. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. Let's